Hi, my name is Ken Cook. I designed the master's brush for the Westcott Company. I'd like to give you a brief rundown on how to uh, assemble and use this, uh, this product. It comes to you in a kit, just like this, and as you open the kit, it has the assembly parts, the struts, and the base plate. In this case, the base plate was ordered for a photogenic uh, light. Uh, you may have other uh, types of lights, and Westcott has different plates to accommodate all of these lights. But anyway, you assemble the struts into the base plate, and you end up with uh, a mini softbox. Now, as part of this master's brush kit, there's a conversion. It's three parts. You replace the inner baffle with this circular baffle that's closer to the light source to help disperse the light crisper. And then we have a front scrim that allows the light through in diminishing densities, producing a beautiful light in the center of the face and a two-stop fall off in 360 degrees. And then a barn door to further help in feathering the light in the case you have a ball headed person or you wanted a sharp shadow, which we'll get into later. So in other words, the mini softbox is a soft light source designed to put soft light and we're going to convert it into the opposite. We're going to convert it into a hard light with fast fall off suitable for crisp parabolic uh, dramatic portraits of people. So with the soft box it's basically I use this as a fill light because it's it's back at the camera and I want a hotter light up front so now we'll make the conversion. Once you've assembled the mini soft box you're ready now to convert it into the master's brush. I call it the master's brush for the particular reason that I like to work as a portrait painter painting light in intricate little spots and this particular light once it's converted will do this for you. So the next step is to hook it up to its light source. Just clips right in. Now we have a completed a mini softbox and we're going to convert it into the master's brush by Just getting rid of this diffusion panel. So now we remove this panel that was designed for the mini softbox to disperse an even soft light. We've taken off that diffusion panel, exposing the, uh, the raw light tube. I experimented when I designed this. I put this in different positions, but I found by putting the inner baffle very close to the light source, but letting more light came out, it improved the efficiency of the output of the light. And then the, the next part of your master's brush kit is the front nylon scrim, which is diminished in size from the center to the edge. It places in very easily. You try to get it as taut as possible. It's very flexible very easy and I must say Westcott made this thing like a tank it's just a beautifully made light okay now we're ready to go and I put in a third feature which enables us to as I said to further work on a, someone with a bald head or you wanted a little more fall off just a simple barn door that attaches quite easily There. Now we have the master's brush ready to go, and I'm going to turn on the light. We have 100% of the light coming out here. We have only a fraction of the light coming out here because of the diminished or the increased screening, thus producing highlights on the center of the face and a two-stop fall off in 360 degrees. Eliminating the need to put a vignette on the bottom of the picture and eliminating the need to go into Photoshop and have to burn in ears and all. It's all done right. Now you've assembled your master's brush and you're ready to work. Now we've had some questions. Uh, how do you use it and what distance? I want to explain that the original softbox that you assembled was designed as a fill light. So 
is back at the camera and then its purpose is to fill the face with an even soft light. I normally expose at this. If I get a reading with my meter of F8, I shoot at F8. If I get a reading of 5.6, I would shoot at 5.6. Now we're ready to use a master's brush. You've got your soft box back at the camera and you've got a nice even light on this pretty face. And you got all that nice velvet skin. Now remember, this is a very important point. This light you see now will become the shadow. It's the exposure, but it will also become the shadow of your picture. So any place there is no light, there'll be a dark shadow. So we want a soft, even light all over the subject. Okay, and just for that point, let's lower the soft box just a little, just to show you. Down lower, lower, lower. Okay, so we want to get as much under here as possible. And one more time, raise it higher. I want you to watch here. See, dark shadows. So now lower the light to the point where you get as much of the uh, light all over her face and neck and then we're forming the chin line. So this will be the fill light. Now with the soft box, I recommend that you put a string onto the tip of this to the face at about 15 inches and th the ideal distance from the light source to the face is about 30 inches. So we have about 30 inches. So I work in close. Now I want you to watch the beauty of the master's brush. This young lady's face is totally blocked up. There's, we'll expose her ear. Her ear, the cheek and the nose all have the same uh, exposure of lighting. But with just a simple turn of two inches, look. Now her ear is in shadow and there's no light on her face. Look at how her face is, is beautifully lighted, but there's a natural fall off. And that's the master's brush at work. Now your job as a photographer is to decide what lighting pattern you want to use on this face. So if you utilize all the lighting patterns, uh, short, broad, split, Rembrandt, broad, Brett, Rembrandt, short, butterfly, modified butterfly light. You can uh, apply all those lights to the face beautifully with the master's brush. So this is what we want. There's Brand X, all burned up. Same exposure from the ear to the nose. A simple two-inch turn. Now I want to show you the beauty of the rotating. Say this poor girl was a man and she uh, had uh, lost her hair. So all you do is rotate the barn doors. Now watch. The top of her head up here. That's all in shadow. So the master's brush is a painting.